What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and we have a brand new clan in Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. It is the Panda Co? Well, it's a unique name for a unique clan that I'm gonna do a breakdown for. We're gonna look at the male and the female, which one I think is better, what traits go well on them, and uh, how I think the clan is overall. So let's dive in. But first, download Jumpstone Legends, a mobile RPG puzzle match game. Use the link in the description to start with free stuff, including a bonus hero. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take a look at the new trait for this clan, which is called Energy Harness. And it says, when the battle starts, gains a shield that lasts for 15 seconds, absorbing damage equal to some percent of their strength. This is an epic here, so it says 283%, but of course it's gonna be higher depending on the rarity and how much you level the companion if you wanna get it all the way up to level 22. Um, but this trait doesn't really stick out to me as being one that I think is gonna be all that powerful or valuable. I probably wouldn't be chasing this clan just for the trait. First of all, I don't love the traits that uh, have that little tagline of only being for the first 15 seconds of battle. I know a lot of the matches in this game are really quick. So 15 seconds may be all you need. Um, and this isn't quite as bad of a trait as some of the ones that do only go for the first 15 seconds, because a lot of times that first 15 seconds of the battle is just so important in keeping your heroes alive until they can get their skills off. So if it's just luck of the draw, you're evenly matched and it's kind of like 50 50 on whose skill is going to go off sometimes it's like whoever's goes off first is just the one that wins the match but with this particular trait you might be able to outlast a little bit of that initial damage uh to get your skills off and your ultimate anyways um and be able to maybe potentially get the edge over your opponent but is it that valuable that I would chase it? No, it's only 15 seconds. And second of all, it is a shield based on strength. This doesn't look like a super high percentage of strength either. So it's really looking like it's a, a pretty small shield, not gonna have a huge impact on the battlefield. Those are just my thoughts. So let's take a look at the individual champions and their skills. Um, I'm jumping over here into the renowned champions section so that we can check it out. I always like to look at the passive first because that's what affects the battlefield first. And this uh, for the male, who by the way is a tank, these are both tanks. Um, so keep that in mind as we're looking at this. Uh, but his passive made of steel says, when the caster's constitution is lower than 50%, the caster gains a permanent shield, which can absorb damage equal to 60% of their lost constitution. That's, that's, that's actually a big shield. So the trait is synergistic with the rest of what's going on here, but that shield will matter. The effect has a 30 second cooldown. Each normal attack or skill damage dealt to a stunned enemy during the cooldown shortens it by three seconds. Dominant force is our active skill here. Smashes the ground with a hammer, dealing damage equal to 500% of the caster's strength to enemies in the area, sending out a circular shockwave that spreads from the center. Uh, enemies hit by the shockwave take an additional damage equal to 300% of the caster's strength and become stunned for one and a half seconds. Uh, the caster and the allies hit by the shockwave take 30% less damage for the next five seconds. So there's nothing too mysterious here. It's pretty obvious what's going on as far as like dealing damage and some benefit um, to your own heroes of taking less damage. And that that's actually probably my favorite part of this particular active skill is not actually the damage this is doing because traditionally tanks don't deal a lot of damage, even if it looks like they're going to. Uh, sure enough, when we go to test tanks, they just don't seem to output the damage they look like they're supposed to do. Um, but this causing your allies to take less damage, that could be really good. That could be really, really good. Um, and then we're going to take a look at the ultimate tempering storm. This is a lot of text. Bear with me. <laughs> Plants the hammer into the ground and enters a parry state for seven seconds. When control effects are inflicted or the damage taken is higher than 4% of the caster's max constitution, the caster gains control immunity for one second and counterattacks nearby enemies once, dealing damage equal to 600% of the caster's strength, stunning them for one second. Um, so I do like the control part of that. Again, the damage being dealt here is probably not that amazing, all things considered, especially if you're trying to make a tank more beefy. Um, but this one is calling for a lot of strength, so Brutal's uh, definitely a trait in the running here. 
For each counterattack, the caster provides a permanent shield for themselves and all allies that absorbs damage equal to 12% of the caster's max constitution. So of course that's calling for the energetic trait. The caster can only counterattack once every one second. After the parry state ends, the caster deals damage equal to 500% of their strength to nearby enemies again and stuns them for two seconds and each counterattack during the parry state increases the damage and control effects by 8%. Wow, that's a lot of text. That's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> it's, it is stuff I like to see. I do think people are going to be looking at the damage first and wondering if that's what makes it good. That's not what makes this particular ultimate good. It's, it is a lot of this other stuff dealing with control. Um, you're getting stuns of your own um, and things like that, which I think are really good. Uh, and, and the damage is bonus, but I think we're going to find that. I, and, and you know what? Color me shocked. If, if we go in here and play test this, and find that he actually deals a lot of damage, I will be shocked. But I don't think the damage is the thing that's gonna matter on this guy. I just think he's really tough. Um, he's preventing uh, control types effects while deal dishing out his own control types of effects. And uh, the shield could be nice, especially the when you pair shields on top of uh, preventing damage um, or taking less damage, that's always an extremely powerful effect. So I think he could potentially be really good. There is an awkward mix here of really wanting to play up the strength and the constitution. And so, like, I just think some pretty vanilla traits are going to be pretty good here. So, uh, basically, brutal, energetic, and honorable. And then you have one slot left for whatever you want. And quite honestly, um, I think that one's just preference. There's so many clan traits these days that just aren't that good because they were capped off a little while back at being only the first 10 seconds or 15 seconds of the battle. And um, for a long time, the text had said that, but that like it actually happens that way now. So um, I don't really have a preference on that, that last slot for a trait for this one. Um, so I think what I would want to do is play test it and then decide on a trait for it. Um, I'm sure. Tell me in the comments wh which one you think goes best there. Um, but I would personally, I would probably just stick with Agile. <laughs> because once they nerfed uh, so many of the traits out there, Agile just became good again. And, you know, there's something to be said for just being able to attack faster all, all game long. Um, so that's probably what I would go with uh, for him. Now let's take a look at the female and we'll figure out which one's better. So her passive is Indomitable. The caster takes 30% of damage received for all allied champions and restores constitution equal to 40% of damage dealt by allied champions. Taking the damage will not kill the caster. That's really interesting. Also, each enemy champion marked by the ultimate increases the caster's damage reduction by 10%. This is a an extremely interesting passive uh, in that we haven't really seen something like this before. And it's going to be one of these until we get to play test. It's either going to be really awesome or it's going to suck really bad. <laughs> like we think it's going to be awesome, but then it could just end up killing her. Like she just takes too much damage. And then even though she can't die from the damage taken from your allies, basically handing it off to her her health could get low enough that an opponent could just kill her. So there is the potential that she just takes too much damage and dies, but there's also the potential that she's so tough. We'll have to read the rest of the specials here, but if you build her right and she's got a lot of vigor and she can just soak damage and not really feel the effect of it, but then just keep healing. Well, then your allies don't die and that's great. And she doesn't die. And it just creates this loop where like your team is free to do whatever it wants. <laughs> so this has the potential to be uh, just a really great or, or not great uh, type of passive, but I'm going to lean towards great for now because I think if you build it right, that could be really powerful. We'll just have to see. Uh, Cloud Piercer deals true damage equal to 15% of the caster's max constitution to the current target and all enemy champions marked by the ultimate up to a maximum of 1,500% of the caster's strength. Loved everything I was reading about that until I saw it was capped by 1,500% of the caster's strength. Because again, it's creating that awkward situation where you want energetic because you're dealing the damage based on constitution. But then it's capped by strength, so you, you want brutal. 
as well. So uh, it's just kind of like requiring a couple of tr like very vanilla traits right off the bat. That's not bad. Those are great traits. Actually, we're kind of in a meta right now where the vanilla traits are some of the best things you can be doing. Um, I've, I've even gone back to using fierce quite a bit because it's just straight up better than a lot of clan traits. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I... I, I understand why they cap it at 1500% of a caster strength, but I wish they didn't because it would be a really, really, really sick PVE. It's way too powerful. I understand why they did it, but a really sick PVE type of hero, but also um, really, really good against uh, PVP. Uh, the second part of this says also gains a shield that lasts for 10 seconds and absorbs damage equal to 60% of all damage. So not only do you have her soaking up the damage of your allies, you also have her getting this shield and in 10 seconds is forever in this game. Soaking up 60% of all the damage is really interesting. Um, okay, Deadly Gale marks an enemy until the battle ends. The marked enemy takes 40% of damage received. So now not only is it funneling from your allies to her, now she's funneling it back to whoever is marked. Uh, and the caster restores constitution equal to 30% of the enemy's healing received. Uh, the skill prioritizes unmarked enemy champions when the marked enemy is killed or inflicted with a mark again. The caster gains a shield that lasts for 10 seconds and absorbs damage equal to 25% of her max constitution. The mark cannot be dispelled. All right. This is a super, super fascinating hero. A, a really interesting tank. Giving me Galabar vibes, female Galabar, but even like these both are actually are kind of like just I feel like they have the potential to be especially highly vigored, extremely difficult to deal with um, and where I think she has the potential to have a leg up even on the Galabars is that um, while Galabar and one of my only complaints about female Galabar is that she would soak up so much damage you just can't kill her if she's highly vigored and built correctly. But like that didn't help the rest of your team. And when you were in a situation where you were attacking, if she was the only one left, you still didn't win, <laughs> right? So she's not necessarily helping your team win um, except on defense where the opponent attacks your team and they can't kill your Galabar. However, here with her... She is affecting the rest of your team. She's she's keeping them alive. Um, where, where tanks do a really good job usually keeping themselves alive, she's helping to keep your team alive. And that's really, really important because a lot of times your biggest damage dealers are fragile and are the first most likely ones to be taken out. So, um, you know, we are living in an age right now, a meta of just tankless aggression. <laughs> <laughs> and this gives a reason to really look at tanky builds again. I mean, I want you to imagine for a moment a team built with the male and the female Pandico and perhaps female Galabar, right? Because these two, female Panda and female Galabar, all of a sudden what female Galabar is doing gets even better with her. This becomes an impossible team to kill. All you have to do then is stick male water and sun in there. And you got a team that's impossible to kill, and eventually Mel Water and Sun's just gonna do it, right? Like eventually Mel Water and Sun's gonna be your your um, your win condition that just takes them all out. But no team is ever gonna kill yours with that kind of build, um, and you're probably gonna kill theirs. Um, uh, you know, I don't I I don't know. We'd have to test it out to see. One thing I do worry about with that build is occasionally you get two big Mel Water and Sun's going up against each other that are built really well and. And everything and they just keep dealing damage and making up health and and nobody nobody ever goes anywhere with that and then you get back to that kind of female galabar situation again where like it's not really helping you win it's just helping you stay alive <laughs> so that's the only that's the only thing but imagine a team like that it would be impossible for anybody below tier one to actually like beat a team like that so um traits same as the male really honestly um uh, I would be going with Brutal because of the cap, uh, the cap of strength. I'd be going with uh, Energetic because of damage being dealt based on Constitution. I'd go with Honorable just because it's amazing, amazing with shields. And uh, I like Honorable better than Energetic anyway for staying alive. 
Um, but all of those together are just gonna, uh, you know, keep her really, really tough to beat. And then Agile, just because, like, the faster the faster you attack, faster your specials go off. You know, that's just the way it is. Okay, so who do I think is better? Um, probably you can tell just the way I'm talking about it. I am leaning towards the female. Um, but I think the male sounds really, really good too. But the female, the female in particular is the one that's getting me excited to, to summon and play test. So that's what I'm going to do. But I want to know what you're going to do. So let me know in the comments. Let me know what other traits you're considering because I just went super vanilla because I think that's what's going to be best. But you can get creative with these two. And I'm sure we'd all love to hear your creativity. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. And I will catch you in the next one.